Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I'm going to be filming a what is in my bag video. I made a very cheeky purchase during Black Friday this year and so I wanted to share it with you guys. Obviously our handbag essentials this year have also changed quite dramatically. <laughs> this is also the first time I'm filming in my very pink bedroom. If you guys want to see me redecorating my bedroom then that is my last video so I will leave that link down below or it will probably pop up at the end of the video as well. I'm also trying to be a little bit festive with my Christmassy jumper on. I've been trying to find a nice fair isle jumper for so long and I'm very picky with them. I really love this one, it's from Mango. I'll link it down below if you're interested. Let me get on and show you what's in my bag. This is my new little baby. I say little, she's not that little. So this is the Chloe Daria bag and I picked this up in the Selfridges Black Friday sale so I got 20% off this and I've had this bag saved on my Instagram for so long. I was completely obsessed when it came out on the catwalk and they actually wore it on the catwalk with like all the zips undone and the fabric showing inside. I thought the colour was perfect for my wardrobe. It's a very classic shade and it's not a hugely popular bag at the moment. Um, I know the Chloe Test bag is very popular at the moment and I often find with very popular bags they can go out of fashion very fast. So I wanted to get something that I knew would last in my wardrobe for a long time and that I would get a lot of wear out. It's a good practical size. So as you can see, it's got quite a lot of width to the bag and it's got many different handles. So it's got this one at the top and then it's got these two here, so you can carry it like that, which is probably my preferred way of carrying it. And then there's a long strap and you can wear it as a crossover. So yes, that was my very cheeky purchase. I am not one for buying loads of designer handbags, so when I buy one, um, it's very rare. I think the last time I bought one was at the very start of uni. Um, and that was also a Chloe bag. So I've just sort of always loved the Chloe aesthetic and everything, so very happy with this little bag. It's very much a present to myself for getting through 2020. <laughs> I was meant to go traveling around Australia this year with friends and don't have boyfriends, so haven't wasted money on that. <laughs> so all in all, I think I deserve it. <laughs> okay, let's get started and I will show you what is in here. So in the first pocket, first thing I have is a mask. But this is one of my handmade masks that I'm selling on my website. So I will link my website below if you are interested in a nice handmade mask. They're 100% cotton, three layers thick. So yeah, this is the first thing that goes in my bag. I've been pretty good at not leaving the house without a face mask. Um, it just sort of fitted into my routine quite easily, bringing a face mask everywhere I go. So that is that. I'm not going to put it on right now because I have lipstick on <laughs> at the moment. Um, and then the next thing I have is my purse. This actually kind of matches my mask. This I picked up in the sale on Oliver Bonus and it's in a really gorgeous soft leather. I usually get my purses from Calf Kids and Inbis Village because I find they are always such a good size. They're so small. Um, I am thinking of sort of downsizing a bit because even this is quite chunky for me, but I like to know that I have a little bit of cash on me if I ever need it for a car park or anything. Um, I can't go completely card only at the moment. I just, it's just, I can't do it. <laughs> and then the next thing I actually picked up on Amazon quite recently because I obviously want this bag to be my go-to bag that I just pick up every time I leave the house. And so I picked up this mini water bottle from Amazon. I can't remember how many ounces this holds, but I I feel like my blood sugar drops so quickly when I go out. So I usually try not to leave the house without water and a snack, just in case I get held up for longer than I'm meant to be out. And this bottle is perfect. It literally fits like it's meant for this bag. <laughs> and then the next bit I have is all kept in this little bag. I don't like having too many bits rolling around in my bag, so I love little handbag tidies like this. This one was one of my drawstring bags that I sold on my website. Um, sadly, they're all sold out now. The first very glamorous thing is a dog poo bag <laughs> for Florence. 
Then I have some hand sanitizer. I think this one is M&S. Um, I also have some hand cream. This one is Crabtree and Evelyn and it smells amazing. It's the perfect little mini size as well. I have my earphones and also some optical wipes <laughs> for my glasses if I ever need them cleaning. These are from Wilkinson's, they are so good. A few hair ties um, because there's nothing worse than when you really wanna tie your hair up and don't have a hair tie. Also have a little hairbrush. This one is just a little Den Man one and it also has a mirror in it. So it's kind of like a two in one, very handy having a mirror when you're out and about, especially if you've been wearing a mask for ages and you're about to meet a friend or something. Then have a lip butter. This one is the Palmer's cocoa butter. This one just never fails. The Burt's Bees lip balms are also very high on my list. I'd actually probably prefer them to these at the moment, but this is just what was in my bag at the moment. And then finally in here, I have a lip liner. This is a Rimmel Exaggerate lip liner. These are my favorite lip liners ever. They're so cheap and so good. And then in the final compartment, I have, oh, I only have two things, but I usually put my phone in this one as well, but it's recording the sound at the moment. Next up is a pair of sunglasses. I can't leave the house without sunglasses. Even if it's gray and miserable, if it's going to get sunny, my eyes just cannot cope with the sun. <laughs> They're so sensitive. So yeah, these are a must have in my handbag. And then finally, this has kind of become a little tradition for me when I buy an expensive bag that I really love is I buy it an umbrella, which sounds very stupid, but it's actually worked very well in my favor. Um, so this one is from Primark. I always pick these ones up because they're so thin and lightweight and they do the trick. I think they're about four pounds. So it also helps if it's raining. I don't want it to rain loads on this bag. I have protected the bag with um, liquid proof. So hopefully that will help as well. If it rains, um, it will help prolong the life of this bag. So there we have it. That was everything that is in my new handbag. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions about the bag, then I will answer them in the comments down below. But yeah, she is my new little baby. I'll probably be styling her up quite a lot on my Instagram. So if you wanna head over there and make sure you're following me there, then you won't miss out on that. Okay, let's move on to the Q and A part of the video. Um, I haven't done one of these in a long time as well. Um, I just thought it'd be nice to sit down and chat with you guys. And I've just realized my phone is recording sound, so I don't know how I'm going to look at, the <laughs> look at the questions. Okay, so Georgia has asked for hand sanitizer and hand cream recommendations. And I love that these are the sort of questions I'm getting now. <laughs> so hand sanitizer, the one from m &S, it's all right. Um, but I would say my favorite one I've tried is from the cow shed, but that's very expensive. And then the other one I like the best is is it the Carex or Cutex one? It's just a very bog standard hand sanitizer. The worst one I've tried is the one that they give out for free in Ikea. It smells disgusting. <laughs> and then for hand cream, this one I picked up at the start of the first lockdown. Um, and actually reading it now, it doesn't say hand cream on it. <laughs> so this is the Aveeno cream. It's the moisturizing cream and this honestly saved my hands. They were so dry and this stuff I've literally, I'm still trying to squeeze the last little bits out that I can. And I don't know why someone put me off of Eno a long time ago. They said, don't bother trying it. But I've tried quite a few things from their brand and I actually really love it. So I think it's just quite personal taste with this brand. So yeah, highly recommend that. Um, I've also been using the Glossier hand cream and it's okay. It's just more perfumey and I don't think it moisturizes as much as this one does. If your hands are in a real state, this is amazing. Someone has asked if I'm going to stay living in the countryside. At the moment, I have no plans to move anywhere. Um, one day I'd love to move out. Um, this is the reason why I'm staying at home at the moment, is to save up for my own place one day. Um, and I don't really see myself moving to a big city at the moment. I always love the countryside and I think I will probably 
try and forever stay in the countryside. Are you going to make any more new clothing collections? Good question. I am definitely going to carry on making things, but they might not necessarily be as many clothing collections. I really want to focus on some more accessories and bags because they went down so well with you guys. I'll probably bring out a summer collection again, um, but I'm going to try and work on bags in the new year, I think, so stay tuned for those. <laughs> on a similar topic, someone has asked if I have any plans to grow my brand. Um, I think at the moment I'm just keeping it super slow and steady and I don't have any plans as of yet. In my head I've obviously got buzzing ideas for it, um, but I'm trying to keep them small at the moment until I can find someone that could help me make it into something bigger. What is one item you haven't made yet but would love to? This is a great question because this week I really want to make a sort of afghan style coat or a quilted coat. I'll probably end up making both. <laughs> but yeah, I have the fabric to make this coat that has like a faux fur collar and big faux fur cuffs and I'm very excited about it. I'm going to try and film the process for you guys so you can see me making it. And yeah, I haven't made a coat in a long time so it will be interesting to see if I can still do it. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Hannah said I think you should bring back the fringe. Do not tempt me, Hannah. <laughs> I feel like a hair change is bound to happen soon because I've just been saving so many images of hair that's sort of like this length, but I just don't know if it would suit me. And then I always love the look of people with fringes, but I feel like it works so much better on dark hair and ginger hair I'm always a bit like oh it doesn't it doesn't look how I thought it was gonna look <laughs> but who knows Hannah maybe one day I will just get the urge and chop my fringe back someone's asked for more Dyson Airwrap tutorials I'm very into that idea I'll probably do that over on my Instagram so if you're interested head over and follow me on there. What is it like living in the countryside? Do you see people much? I am very much an introvert and I am very happy to stay at home on my own all day and not see anyone. But then at the same time, I get urges every now and then to be like, oh, I just wish I had more friends close by. And it can be quite lonely living in the countryside. Um, if you don't have like a good group of friends at home, all of my friends have literally moved far and wide across the country <laughs> but I do have a little group of friends that I go and visit every now and then but obviously because of Covid I haven't seen them in ages so I miss them a lot. <laughs> Another funny one, are you the only ginger in your family? I am. I am the random redhead. <laughs> so many of you are asking what's on my phone. <laughs> I don't know why you want to know what's on my phone, it's not very well organised so it would probably stress you out. <laughs> One related to this video, someone has asked if I prefer my new Chloe over the Hudson bag. The Hudson is the one I bought in the first year of uni. I still wear it a lot and I still would wear it. Um, I don't reach for it quite as much because it's black. Um, I find I wear a lot more brown accessories at the moment, but it's definitely staying in my wardrobe forever. It's still, like, I don't look at it and go, ooh, I don't like the style of that anymore. Um, so yeah, still love it, still wear it. <laughs> Tips on how to sew with velvet or any stretchy fabric. I've literally decided I'm never ever sewing with velvet again, and I've actually never really worked with stretchy fabric. If you're really wanting to work with stretchy fabric, then I would recommend buying an overlocker because that's much easier than stitching it. Um, and that's often how most stretchy fabrics are constructed because if you do a straight stitch then there's not really any it doesn't have any stretch whereas if you do an overlock it's like a selection of zigzags basically which can stretch with the fabric and velvet um, my main tips are try not to include any other fabrics because then it gets very hard to sew so don't like mix it with a cotton and when you're pinning it if you pin like crisscrosses um, in different directions that sometimes helps but yeah horrible fabric to work with ella's asked how are you now finding life post uni as i know it was tricky for you at first yes <laughs> life post uni was so strange 
Um, I think just adjusting to living back home in general was hard and I think a lot of people have found that this year losing jobs and the whole pandemic everyone's had to change so much and I definitely feel much better about it now than I did a year ago um, but I still get very down sometimes and it's just still a bit like oh my goodness when am I ever gonna move away from home and when am I gonna like you know this isn't a normal career what am I doing like <laughs> I have those moments a lot and it's very scary working for yourself because I literally don't know what I'm doing next week. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's stressful but I, I don't think I'd enjoy any other job as much as this so I am very happy and very grateful for this to be my job. Okay, this is a question that I definitely want to answer. Do you ever regret starting YouTube at a young age? I don't regret starting my YouTube at such a young age. Um, I think I've always been quite good at knowing what not to share um, and that's got me to where I am today. I always feel like, oh my god, imagine if I just said this one thing and that could ruin my, my online career. <laughs> my dad started watching the Beauty Boot Camp videos the other day and I literally could not sit in the same room because it just cringes me out so much. I just can't. I can't watch those. And I actually set quite a few of my videos on private, um, I think at the start of this year, because I just couldn't deal with the fact that people could watch them still, and I just, I just had to put them on private. So I can still see them, but I know I've actually had quite a few people asking me where my old videos are, and I can't believe you actually want to watch them still, which <laughs> makes me feel very happy that you still want to watch them. Um, but, I don't know. I think I think I was just thinking from a perspective of if I were to go and get a different job somewhere, they could see all of this and oh my god, I don't know if I want them to see all of that. Um so yeah, I'm sorry about those being private now. <laughs> but yeah, obviously I've changed so much. I've nearly been on YouTube for 10 years now, which is madness. Let's end with this question because I feel like it's a good one to round up the video and it's what are your goals for 2021? I feel like it's going to be very easy to overwhelm myself with things I want to do in 2021 because obviously we've missed out from doing so many things in 2020. Um, I would love to go traveling a little bit, that was ideally what this year was for for me, was to go traveling. But I think my two main goals are going to be work related. I want to try and create a more stable aesthetic and content on my Instagram and also build my little brand a little bit more and start to really think about how I can actually properly make it into like a a proper brand because <laughs> in my head it's still just like things I make and put out there so maybe looking into manufacturing processes possibly by the end of next year who knows um oh and I also really want to jump on the bandwagon of learning ceramics <laughs> it looks so relaxing and it's meant to be very good for your mental health so I definitely am going to sign up for a course on that once COVID and the vaccine have kind of settled down a bit, I was going to join one in January, um, but it was like in a local college and I thought that wouldn't be a good idea right at the start. I just don't want to bring COVID back to my parents. That would just be awful. Those are some of my plans for 2021. I'd love to know yours if you want to let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to end the video there. If you guys have any pressing questions for me then put them in the comments down below and I will try my best to get back to you. I hope you guys are all having a great day and I really hope that you all have a lovely Christmas or holiday or whatever you do. I know that with this new tier 4 it's pretty brutal and a lot of you are getting stuck not being able to go back to family. I don't think my sister is going to be able to come home for Christmas because she's a junior doctor down in Cornwall and she, lots of her friends that are also junior doctors have now been diagnosed with COVID so she just doesn't think it'll be safe enough to come home. But I've basically had no expectations for a good Christmas so I'm feeling fine to be honest. I'm just happy to have a small Christmas as long as there's good food and a Christmas film. I'm happy. I will leave the link to my face mask down below um, and yeah I will see you guys all in my next video.
Bye.